This week on the show, we have Griffin Santipietro from the hit Netflix show, Cobra Kai. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivation and advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that the quality of your thoughts equals the quality of your life. The reality is we can have a beautiful face, amazing relationships, great career, but if our thoughts aren't serving us, then how can we truly appreciate those things? When we realize the quality of our thoughts equals the quality of our lives, we understand the importance of prioritizing our mental health and make time to do things that make us happy. Successful and happy people prioritize personal development and take time to nurture their mind by filling it with thoughts and beliefs that empower them rather than hold them back. If you look at any successful person you know, they set aside time for cultivating a winning mindset, whether that's taking time to learn a new skill, working on projects that they are passionate about, listening to content that uplifts them, or simply by giving back to their community and creating a sense of purpose. Ask yourself, what's one reoccurring thought that's been holding me back? Whether your reoccurring thoughts are fear, scarcity, or lacking purpose, when we pinpoint what the thoughts are, we can work towards tackling the issue and replacing those beliefs with ones that serve us. Once you identify the thoughts that aren't serving you, you get to the root problem and have the ability to be more self-aware. Self-awareness, after all, is the catalyst of all change. As Tony Robbins quotes, the quality of your life is a direct reflection of the quality of the questions you are asking yourself. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. Um, for our viewers that don't know your character on Cobra Kai, which, I mean, everyone does know, but just in case, tell us a little bit about your character on the show. Yeah, um, I play Anthony LaRusso, the uh, son of the original Karate Kid, uh, Daniel LaRusso. Um, and he uh, he's not exactly like his dad. He's not, you know, the whole first couple seasons, his whole deal is that he doesn't want to do karate, doesn't want to get involved. He just likes video games. Um, but then recently he uh, got into a little bit of a bullying situation. Um, and because of that, he kind of got launched into this karate world. Um, and yeah, so he's just like, he's like, he started out as this kind of like bratty kid, but now we get to see that he's a little more compassionate than we gave him credit for. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Griffin Santipietro, who plays Anthony LaRusso in the hit Netflix series, Cobra Kai. Griffin, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here. Happy Thanksgiving. I, it's amazing that you're spending it with me on my show. So thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, no problem. So, so let's talk about your career. So when did you realize your passion for acting and what kind of steps did you take to make acting a career? Um, well, I started with theater with my brother. Um, and I think that, I don't know, it can, I was never like a sporty kid, you know what I mean? So this was kind of the first thing that I found that gave me like that same passion. Um, and so I started doing these acting classes at this local place and um eventually it led to this talent search mm -hmm. um where a bunch of agents and managers came and then that's kind of how i got started Ooh, very nice and i feel like theater is very difficult it's not that easy because my my uncle is a theater actor so what was it about theater that you you know sparked your interest and how do you think it kind of developed your skills for the big screen um yeah i think I mean, they're completely different yeah. kind of mediums. Uh, I think it's a lot of like, you know, the difference between acting for someone two feet in front of you versus like, you know, 60 feet in front of you. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think it was a good way to start, you know, kind of, especially as a kid who had like a big personality, it was a nice way to like, it kind of express myself. But um, I think I found that I liked the subtlety more of film and TV acting, um, but Theater is definitely something I want to continue to to develop. Yeah, I feel like you really have to get into character and be be like, you know, let your inhibitions go with with theater, right? You can't be shy. Were you ever shy as a kid? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still pretty shy. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think it was. Uh, it like I said, I mean, that was kind of my way of expressing yeah. myself because I was super. You know, I had like a speech impediment too. Like I did oh. not. 
ever talk to people. So I think that was a nice way for me to kind of get better at expressing myself. Yeah, that's a bold way to do that. <laughs> to step yeah, out of your yeah. comfort zone. <laughs> um, for our viewers that don't know your character on Cobra Kai, which I mean, everyone does know, but just in case, tell us a little bit about your character on the show. Yeah, um, I play Anthony LaRusso, the uh, son of the original Karate Kid, uh, Daniel LaRusso. Um, and he uh, he's not exactly like his dad. He's not, you know, the whole first couple seasons, his whole deal is that he doesn't want to do karate, doesn't want to get involved. He just likes video games. Um, but then recently, he uh, got into a little bit of a bullying situation. Um, and because of that, he kind of got launched into this karate world. Um, and yeah, so he's just like, he's like, he started out as this kind of like bratty kid, but now we get to see that he's a little more compassionate than we gave him credit for. And I heard for your audition, you drove to New York and that you got the audition almost on your first try. So tell us about that audition. What did you have to do? I remember <laughs> a little bit. I was like, okay, it was like sixth grade. Then wow, um, one week again, my mom and I just went into New York to tape it. Um, and it was one scene, I think. It was the scene in season one, I think I'm like eating like um, English muffins and I'm complaining about them. <laughs> um, and I think that was it. And it was just the one scene. And I had known, I had seen the Karate Kid movie, so I recognized the Cobra Kai name. Um, and then, yeah, it was just that one audition. Yeah, I mean, that that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm pretty lucky. Well, was that a silent on camera edition where you just had to just act it out or did you have lines to say as well? I did. I had like, um, I, I still think I remember. It was like, <laughs> he gives me like um, English muffins for breakfast and I say like, I say, I say like, what are we, what are we in Afghanistan? Like I say some like, really <laughs> messed up thing. Um, and, I, and I still think they had it in the first season. Oh, that's hilarious. You know, like you've been on the show for a long time. So how has it been growing with the cast and working with everybody? It's been a pretty amazing experience. I mean, these people really are kind of like, like my family because I've, I've literally grown up on the show. Yeah. Um, and so I think I've gotten to learn a lot from everyone, um, especially being one of the younger cast members. Um, and it's just been a really nice kind of constant in my life. Mm -hmm. And how, is, how have you grown personally, just as a person, being on the show um, and having this as your big break? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as like a actor in general, like watching all these really great people is um, super helpful. But then I also think that everyone is so kind of professional, you know what I mean? That I think I learned a lot, um, you know, in the kind of a maturity way. <laughs> you know, because I, I wasn't just like a, didn't have the opportunity to be like a bratty little kid. Like everyone was so work, hard working that I kind of got that um, message at a really young age. And I think that I kind of everything I've learned from the show has been really helpful in my um, life outside of it. Uh, and it's been just a really lucky experience. Mm -hmm. And how has your character grown over these seasons? Uh, yeah, I was, I guess, talking about this earlier, is that Anthony is, like, okay, the first couple seasons, he is, like, the worst kid you're, you'll ever meet. Everybody hated him so much. He is just, kind of a brat is the best word, you know? I mean, he grew up rich. He's very entitled. Um, but then around season four, we see that he kind of starts bullying this kid um, because his friends want him to. He's very peer pressured into that situation. Um, and which is something that I think a lot of kids can relate to, you know, caring too much about what your friends think than what is actually right. Um, and then just recently in season five, we got to see that he is a much more compassionate person than we were um, seeing before. And he does kind of feel bad for the way he used to be. And he's trying to make up for it. Yeah. And have you been surprised by the success of the show? Because I feel like it's it's really blown up. It's I mean, everybody knows the show. It's international. So have you been surprised at all? I mean, yeah, <laughs> I remember when, um, I remember the first like three seasons, we were on like a much smaller streaming service and I had a smaller part. And so none of it, it didn't really like, you know, hit that big yet. Um, and then we went over to Netflix around season three. Yeah, season three, we went over to Netflix. Um, and then it was like crazy. I, I, I mean, I can't even like, it kind of happened. It felt like it happened in a day, um, but it just went from being like, 
our little show that we did to like the biggest show on Netflix. So I think that um, uh, it was kind of crazy to get get used to that, but yeah. um, you know, to see like the fan reactions have been amazing. Yeah, and and on top of being an actor, you have to balance being a normal teenager. I know that you also go to school. So how has it been? Do people recognize you? <laughs> like what um, are the, Yeah, it was, like I'm sure you're like the popular person in school cuz, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a little weird to get used to. I yeah. think um especially since it happened in like the middle of a school year. Um, yeah. But I mean, what I mean just, you know, everyone already knew I was an actor because I was always leaving for like weeks or months on end and trying to balance my work which has always been fun um but i think it was it was a you know it was one of those it's like when the show blew up in general like everything kind of changed a little bit but you know once i got used to it it was it was really fun yeah i'm sure it was fun i'm sure everyone you're like the popular person does does anyone ask you for your autograph <laughs> Uh, I got it. People asked me for a few pictures, like walking through the hallway. Um, but <laughs> yeah. that was mostly at the beginning of the year. I think people are starting to get that I'm not that cool. So, <laughs> what would be your dream collaboration or role? Oh wow! I think um, well, I'm a huge comic book fan. Mm -hmm. I've been reading comic books since I was a kid. So I think like any superhero thing would be awesome. Um, and I think collaboration wise, I'm a really big. Um, one well, the, the comedy idea. I'm a really big Dan Harmon fan. Mm -hmm. um, he made like Community and Rick and Morty, so I think to do anything with him would be really fun. Um, oh. And I'm a. I guess this is back to the superhero thing. I'm a really big Robert Pattinson fan. Um, oh, nice. I think he's a really great actor, and you know he's also Batman. So mm -hmm. collaborating with him would be awesome. <laughs> what kind of superhero? A good superhero, or or like an evil villain, <laughs> I... or both? <laughs> or but yeah, I think I would enjoy playing a villain a lot. Ooh, really? I did. Looks really fun. Um, but then also like, I, for more, for that younger me that used to read all those comic books, I think he would want me to be a hero. Yeah. So <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think your fans would be disappointed if you were a villain, but I mean, it could be a good thing, you know? <laughs> it could be. It could be like like a Loki kind of thing. And, you know, I created my platform to inspire and uplift my audience because I don't feel like there's enough motivational content out there. So for anybody that's watching that isn't seeing results, maybe they're in the entertainment industry, they're going to auditions and they're just not, you know, seeing success. What would you say to encourage and uplift them? Um, well, I think this is something that kind of every actor throws around, but it kind of starts to lose its meaning after a while, which is that idea of like you go to you don't book 90% of the auditions you do, you yeah. know? And so I think it's like half the battle is just a mental thing. You have to be able to put in your best effort and for something you might really want and then not be able to get it. Like that is a very, very hard thing to get used to. Um, but I think once you can do that, it becomes uh, so much easier to kind of look to the future, hopefully, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, because it's so easy to kind of get, get hard on yourself and say that, you know, if it hasn't worked out with these 30 auditions I just did, then why would it ever work out in the future? Yeah. Um, but I think it's just, you know, obviously I think it, having a support system is kind of what has helped me, mm -hmm. um, having people to kind of help you when it gets rough. Um, and yeah, I would say that's, that's the biggest thing is that it's a very challenging mental thing that you have to overcome. Um, but once you do, I think you can really start enjoying yourself. Mm -hmm. And what are some obstacles that you kind of faced when you got into the industry? Because I like that you said, you know, you don't book every audition. There is a lot of failure. I know for me as well, like I went to many auditions and I didn't get it, but then I got some big ones. So, so what are some obstacles that you faced professionally and how did you get through that? Um, I think at the beginning, I mean, I think also being like a young kid in the industry, there was a lot of like, um, nervousness and I was afraid to do certain things because I'm worried people were going to laugh at me. So I think there's a lot of insecurity when I was young that I think um, the industry kind of helped me out of. Um, just kind of facing those parts about yourself that you're not a huge fan of, but learning to, to like them. Um, and then I think that, you know, I think the biggest problem with me is always just like, there are those times where you put in like the best audition you've ever put in to the part you want more than anything. And then they wanted a kid that's like slightly taller or blonde hair <laughs> yeah. or like it's like it's like that one thing that it's like it's not i think that's where where it gets hard for me is like when it's not when it's out of my control yeah because then there's nothing i can do about it and i don't like that feeling of you know 
not being able to do anything about it. But I think, again, that's just something you've got to mentally be able to overcome. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you're very mature for your age. So if you can name three traits that have made you successful, what would you say they are? Ooh, um, it's kind of, you know, cheesy, but perseverance. Yes. Um, I'd say perseverance. I would say professionalism. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of knowing when it's time to, you know, get work done instead of having fun. Yeah. Um, and, ooh, what's a uh, trait? Um, I would say... Kind of, I maybe it's not that really a word, but like hardworkingness. Like, yeah, I yeah. Feel like it's definitely a better word for that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the thing is that this is an industry where you you gotta just keep pushing. You know, you you can't really relent. Absolutely, <laughs> you have to be persistent, right? Otherwise, yeah. it's not happening. You gotta just keep. Otherwise, because everyone exactly. wants to be in this industry, right? So if you're right. not persistent, and were, yeah. And if it were easy, everyone would do it. So it's like exactly. It's just you gotta put it all in. That's what I remind myself every day. If it was easy, <laughs> yeah. everyone would do it. That's why I'm working so hard. <laughs> exactly. I, I like that. And Griffin, what are you currently working on? Um, currently, I'm working on a lot of school. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, this last summer, I worked on a film called um, A Paracosm, which um, will come out sometime <laughs> um, that I'm really excited for people to see. Um, and yeah, right now, just a lot of it's junior year. So a lot of pretty heavy work. Very nice. And, you know, it is Thanksgiving for all of our American viewers. So I want to ask you, what's one thing you're thankful for this Thanksgiving? Ooh, <laughs> um, I would say I one thing I might be most thankful for is the fan reception to yeah. Anthony this last yeah. year. Um, it was something that I hadn't gotten before because people were kind of hated the character when mm -hmm. he first, you know, when season one, when he was annoying. So to see that there were actually people out there that could appreciate this character as much as I do. Um, was really nice. And Griffin, congratulations on all your success. Come back on the show anytime and happy Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving to you. Oh, late Thanksgiving. <laughs> Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Yeah.